find that area of the of the triangle. So this is a right triangle because we have a right angle right here. So this is a right triangle. So I'm going to start with the formula to find the area of a triangle. Area equals base times height divided by 2 or times 1 half. So if I have a right triangle and I make a copy and rotate it, I'm going to have two right triangles, which is the same as, and I've, I formed a rectangle, which is area equals base times height. But since I only want the area of half of what I just found, I need to divide it by 2 or multiply by 1 half to find the area of a triangle. So all triangles have a formula to find it, how much space is taken up. Area equals base times height divided by 2 or multiply by 1 half. So I'm going to identify my base and my height. So my base and my height is going to be 14 centimeters and 4 centimeters. Because I have a right angle right here, you identify the base and the height by the right angle. So which two sides are perpendicular? So which two sides run into that right angle? So this is the bottom of my right angle right here. And the side that's connected to that, that's perpendicular to that right angle, is 14 centimeters. So I'm going to substitute that into my formula. And then the other side that's connected to my right angle is this side right here. And the length of that side is 4 centimeters. So then I'm going to multiply that by 1 half. And that will give me my answer. So I can take half of 4. It doesn't matter the order that you multiply because of the community property of multiplication. So I'm going to take half of 4 first, which is going to be 2 centimeters. And then I'm going to bring down everything that I didn't use, which is this 14 centimeters. And then I'm going to multiply 14 centimeters times 2 centimeters. And that's going to help me get my final answer. How much space is this? right triangular pyramid taking up 28 centimeters squared. Remember, area is two-dimensional centimeters times centimeters. Volume is three-dimensional and a length is one-dimensional. So the length by itself is one-dimensional. The height by itself is one-dimensional. So we have our final answer, 28 centimeters squared. This question a right a rectangular a rectangular poster has an area of uh, 34 square units it is five and two-thirds feet wide and it's at its base what is the height of the poster so I'm going to use my formula for a rectangle because I'm dealing with area so I need to start with an area formula for a rectangle so I know my formula for a rectangle is area equals base times height because all right now I need to find substitute now it says the area is 34 square feet so I want to substitute 34 square feet into my formula I'm going to bring down my equal sign and it says the base is five and two thirds so I'm going to substitute five and two thirds and for the base and I'm not going to write that part right there then I need to bring down I want to find the height of the poster. So I need to solve for my variable. The first thing I'm going to do is check. I have to divide both sides by 5 and 2 thirds because the inverse of multiplication is division. So I have to first change 5 and 2 thirds into an improper fraction. So 3 times 5 is 15 plus 2 is 17 over 3 times the height. And then I need to solve for my variable which means to get the variable on one side by the equal sign by itself. So I can do two things. I'm going to do one, one way, and then I'm going to do another way. 17 over 3 times h. So I can divide both sides by 17 over 3. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. Anything divided by itself equals 1. So 17 divided by 17 over 3 cancels each other out, and I'm left with just h. And then I can rewrite this, so 34 divided by 17 over 3. I can't have division next to division, so I multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. So I skip, flip, and multiply. So I have 34 for the numerator, 34 times 3, which is going to be 102, divided by 1 times 7 for the denominator, 17. And then I, once, I, once I divide that, I end up with 6. So the height, 6 is going to be equivalent to the height and you can check that by substituting 6 into the formula for the height 
So if I have 34 as an area and I have five and two thirds times the height, which is six, which I said the height was once I evaluated, you can check that. So we have um, 17 over three times six over one. 17 times six for the numerator is 102 divided by one time, three times one is three. So 102 divided by three, and that's gonna give me 34. So I know that six is the correct answer for the height. Now, we another way to do this, so the second way, so you can divide both sides by 17 over three, but we know that dividing by number is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So I can multiply both sides by 17 over three. Why can I do that? Because the goal is to get this to cancel out because we want to get the variable H on one side of the equal sign by itself. So we need to move this 17 over 3. So if I have 17 over 3 and I multiply by the reciprocal, which is 3 over 17, the numerator is going to be 17 times 3, which is 51. And then the denominator is going to be 7 times 3, which is also 51. And 51 divided by 51 is equivalent to 1. So these will cancel each other out, and I will be left with H. By on one side of the equal sign by itself, and the other side, once evaluated, is going to be the value of H. So I have 17 times 34 for the numerator. So 17 times 34 is 578. And then for the denominator, I have 3 times 1, and 3 times 1 is 3. So once I do 578, I did not multiply by the reciprocal because that is going to be too big, because my answer should be 6. So I should have multiplied by the reciprocal right here, which is 3 over 17. So I should multiply by 3 over 17. So 34 times 3 is 102. You have to make sure you multiply by the reciprocal, because this didn't cancel out. If I multiply 17 over 3 times 17 over 3, I'll end up with what I just had over here, but well, that 500 number over 9, which is incorrect. You have to make sure you multiply by the reciprocal because reciprocals are the only thing that's going to cancel each other out. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 over 17. By 3 over 17. So now I have 3 times 34, which is 102. And then for the denominator, I have 17 times 1, which is 17. And then once I have 102 divided by 17, I can see that I'm going to get the same answer. H is equivalent to 6. So either way you do it, you still get the same answer. So I will put here the number 6, and then I have to pick my units. I have to pick my units, which is going to be a feet because area is or a length is one dimensional. This question, all you have to do is find the height uh, to the corresponding length. So find the height. So if you look here, uh, 20 yards is the base. So if 20 yards is the base, 20 yards is right here. So the height that corresponds to that base is going to be 24. So that's all you will have to do for this question. So how do you identify? You have to find the right angle. So since the right angle is connected to the 20 and the 24, one is the base and one is the height. So 20 is the base, 24 has to be the height. Now if this question asks, what is the height that corresponds to 40 as a base? Then you would have to use uh, the 12 because the right angle was here. So it will be 40 and 12 is the base and height. And no matter which one you use, as long as it's a right angle, a base and a height, you're gonna get the same answer. So that's all you have to do for this one. Um, fairly easy, you're gonna get the same answer. This question asks, how many cubes can you fit along the length? How many cubes can you fit along the width? And how many cubes can you fit along the height? Uh, and we're using one-third edge length cubes. Uh, use one-third edge length cubes. Let's cut off a little bit. So I need to find my length. I need to see how many one-thirds I can fit across the length. So if I have a cube right here, 
or a rectangular prism. I have a length which is two and one third. I have a width which is three and one third. And I have a height which is one and one third. So I need to see how many one third cubes can I fit along this base. So I need to see how many one thirds are in two and one third. So for the length, I'm going to use my uh, two. I'm going to use division one third divided by uh, two and one thirds divided by one third. I have to change this to an improper fraction. So this will be six plus one is seven over three. Then I have to multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor. And then I end up with 21 divided by three, which is equivalent to seven. So that means I can fit seven cubes. The length is going to be equivalent to seven cubes. So I can fit seven one third cubes across the length. How do I know that? Because seven one thirds are in two and one third. So I can fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven one third edge length cubes across the length. How you can check it by saying, okay, one third times seven is going to be equivalent to seven over three, which is off, which is two and one third. Now I need to see how many cubes can I fit across the the next dimension, which is the so the length. I just did two thirds. I just did the length. So I'm gonna put seven cubes can fit across the length. Now I need to figure out how many cubes I can fit across the width. So now I'm going to do with how many cubes can I fit across three and one third? I need to see how many one thirds are in three and one third. So I have to do three and one third divided by one third. You have to change this uh, mix this mixed number to an improper fraction. So three times three is nine plus one is ten over three. And you can't have division next to division, so you multiply by a reciprocal. And then you end up with 30 divided by three, which is ten. So that means I can fit 10 one third cubes across the width. So I can fit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 cubes across the, the width. So that means I can fit a total of 70 cubes in the bottom of this figure. So if I finish doing all of the lines, I can fit 70 cubes across the bottom layer. So I have 10 cubes across the width. Now I need to see how many cubes I can fit along the height. So how do I figure out how many cubes can fit along the height? I have to see how many one-third cubes can go into one and one-third. So the division equation will be one-third divided by uh, one-third, because I need to see how many one-thirds are in one and one-third. You have to change this to an improper fraction, so I'll have four over three. And you have to multiply by the reciprocal of the divisor to get 12 over three, which is equivalent to four. So that means I can fit four unit cubes across the height. So I can fit four unit cubes across the height. So that means I can go up one, two, three, four cubes high. So if I can fit 70 cubes on the bottom layer and I can go up four units high, I can fit another 70 cubes on the second layer and another 70 cubes on the third layer, and another 70 cubes on the top layer. So I have uh, four unit cubes across the height, and then it says the volume of the rectangular prism. So I can use the number of cubes to find the volume, which you don't have to do that as long as you get the answer right. But I'm gonna keep going with the number of cubes. I'm going to keep going with the uh, with the volume of cubes. So I know how many cubes I can, how many one third inch length cubes I can fit inside of this figure, because I have 70, seven times 10, which is how many cubes I can fit along the bottom layer, and then I have to go four cubes high. So 70 times four is going to be 280 one third inch length cubes. So I can fit 180 one third inch length cubes inside of this prism with these dimensions. Then I need to find the volume of one cube. So one third times one third times 
times one third is going to tell me the volume of one cube. If you have a small cube and the edge length is one third, the length, the width, and the height of the cube are going to be exactly the same because that's the unique about a cube. It's made up of all, all of the edges are exactly the same. So I have one third times one third, which is one ninth times one third, and that's going to be one over 27. So the volume of one cube is one over 27. So if I have 108, 280 of these cubes inside of this prism right here, then I can easily find how many small cubes. If the volume of one cube is 1 over 27, and I put two cubes in there, that's going to be 1 over 27 times 2. If I put another cube in there, that's going to be 1 over 27 times 3. If I put another cube in there, it's going to be 1 over 27 times 4. So if I have a total of 280, I can find the volume by multiplying the volume of one cube, which is 1 over 27, times the, vo the total number of cubes, which is going to be equivalent to 280 divided by 27. And 280 divided by 27 is equivalent to a number that they didn't say around. So let me find the volume. So 2 and 1 third times 3 and 1 third times 1 and 1 third. 2 times 3 is 6 plus 7 over 3 times... 10 over 3 times 4 over 3. So I have 27 for the denominator. Oh, I was supposed to... Okay. And then for the numerator, I have uh, 70 times 4, which is the same thing I had, which is 280. So, so this is using a formula. Volume equals length times width times height. And notice that I got the same exact answer that I got when I used the unit cube formula. So 280 divided by 27 is going to be the volume of the prism, the volume of the right rectangular prism. Um, and it doesn't say round to the nearest um, number. So I'm just going to put 10 and 300. Uh, so that's what I ended up with once you divide. And that is what you will put here. Um, that's a lot of work. And that's it for that question. For this question, we need to identify the number of base. And we need to identify the number of lateral face. And we need to identify the height of the pyramid. So if you look here, you identify a figure by its base. So this base, one, two, three, four, five, is a penta pentagon. So it's just a pentagonal pyramid. So the base, we pyramids only have one base. Fair enough. This is the base. The base is the bottom. The lateral face, since it's a pentagonal pyra pyramid, the base has one, two, three, four, five edges. So that means it must have five lateral faces to connect to each one of the edges of the base. So if I were to draw a net, one, two, three, four, five. Let me start over. One, two, three, four, five. You would need a triangle, a lateral face to connect to each edge of the base. So whatever the number of the base is, that's how many lateral faces. So we have five lateral faces. And then the height of the pyramid is going to be in the middle. The height is always perpendicular to the base. So if the bottom is the base, this is the height right here, which is 13 centimeters tall. The height is one dimensional, so it's going to be a one dimensional quantity, um, which is just centimeters. This question, so we have to find the missing vertices. So if you think about it, they already did all the hard work because we already have the x coordinates labeled for us. We just need to figure out the y coordinates in the order pair. So we already have two of the vertices and we have we know that it's a rectangle. So if we have a rectangle and we already know two of the vertices. So I have six and three tenths compared to three. I know six and three tenths should be over this way and three should be over here somewhere. So I know this is going to be on this side of my rectangle and this order pair is going to be on this side. 
Now I need to look at the y coordinates. Since 7 and 5 tenths is greater than 2, I know that this is going to be higher. So I know that this point right here is going to be the order pair 6 and 3 tenths for the x coordinate, and then 7 and 5 tenths for the y coordinate. Then, since they don't have the same x or y coordinate, I know this point is going to go down here. So 3 as the x coordinate, 2 as the y coordinate. Now I need to figure out these missing vertices. And since this x coordinate is 6 and 3 tenths, because it's parallel to the one above it, because you have to move to the right the same number of units, 6 and 3 tenths units, these are going to have the same exact x coordinate. Now if you look, this left and right, well, we have uh, 2 as the y coordinate right here. So for both of these points, you had to move down 2 units. So since these are directly across from each other, they cross the y-axis at the same point. So that means they're going to have the same y-coordinate. So that is the missing value that I need here, which is a 2. And then here, since the x-coordinates, well, I already know what the x-coordinate is, which is 3, right? Because they told me what the x-coordinate is. Why is the x-coordinate 3? Because it's parallel to this one. You have to go to the right the same number of units to get the same x coordinate so but for both of these points you have to go over one two three units so that's why the x coordinate is three here and then the y coordinate should be the exact same as the one across from it because that's how far you have to move up on the y axis so this point is seven and five tenths notice that you have for rectangles since you have two sets of parallel sides you're going to use each ordered pair twice. So the x coordinate 6 and 3 tenths and 3 is going to be used twice. So we have 3 used twice here and 6 and 3 tenths used twice here. And then we have for the y coordinate, we have 7 and 5 tenths and 2. So we use 7 and 5 tenths twice and we use 2 twice. So what did my, our friend do wrong? So this is what the student said uh, was the order pair and this is what the student said the order pair was. So if I compare what I wrote, so these two, to the student, it looks like the student mixed up the x and the y coordinate. So let's check the other vertice. So it looks like the student mixed up the x and the y coordinate. So that is going to be this answer choice right here. The student switched the x and the y coordinate. So that's how you would go about doing this question. This one, you identify a figure by its base. So if you think about it, identify the three-dimensional figure. So we have our three-dimensional figure right here. And the base is the shape of a triangle. So since the base is a triangle, it's called a triangular prism or pyramid. And if you think about it, the lateral face are made up of triangles. One, two, three lateral face made up of triangles. So I'm looking for a triangular pyramid. If your lateral face are made up of triangles, it's called a pyramid. And when your lateral face are made up of rectangles, it's called a prism. So if we look at this one, the triangular, we have a base of a triangle right here. And then the lateral face are triangles as well. So this is a triangular pyramid right here. Now this one is not the right answer because this is a square pyramid. If I were to draw the net for or a rectangular pyramid, if I were to draw the net, it would look something like this which is not the same as the net draw right here. So you would not pick C. And this one right here is called a A, is a triangular prism because the base is a triangle and the lateral face are made up of rectangles. So if I were to draw a net for this one, I would draw my base first and then I would draw a lateral face to connect to each one of those. And you could draw it like this. So there are so many different ways to draw nets. I prefer mine like this and then you will draw another triangle to connect to the base now there are other ways to draw this this same net um, you can draw the base and then draw the lateral face and then draw the other lateral face and then connect your lateral face together so you could also draw it the, the net like like this but it's not that big so this is another example so this net and this net are both triangular prisms because you have two base and three lateral face two base three lateral face 
So this is just another way to draw the same exact figure. You can also draw the neck like this. Two base, and once you fold this over, you want to get the same figure. Another way to draw the neck, you could draw it like this. 